you know, hopefully we can help other tractor owners out, other LS tractor owners out. Good morning, everybody. It's not your normal uh, breaking free off-grid video, but I'll try and make it as entertaining as I possibly can. And we're going to just talk about the LS tractor for a minute. And... Uh, Maybe it'll help someone diagnose the problems that they're having and kind of a little bit what I had to go through to figure out what problem we had with it. Yeah, Murphy kind of popped his head up a minute and wanted to make sure we were still on our toes. We went, went down to get water the other day and went to go, hi Goose, went to go fill up the, the water tanks in the cabin and the, the valve broke and we couldn't open it up to fill up the water tanks eh, okay no big deal luckily I had another valve from the old ram pump thank goodness otherwise we would have been screwed eh, not really screwed I, I built redundancies into the water system so each 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 of the three tanks above in the loft they have their own water shut off but we could we could have figured it out and then I'm driving the tractor yesterday to put put the water tank away and it dies on me I'm like oh crap what now wasn't expecting it just kind of was going and then it the power it power derated itself and then it died I tried to start it back up it wouldn't start back up I'm like oh crap so I go grab the manual and start trying to figure out what's wrong with it there's no error codes that popped up on the screen <coughs> I'm like oh crap so after fiddling around for five or ten minutes inside warming up I come back out here and it starts right back up again I'm like all right cool I don't know if I still have a problem but let's get it moved I moved about five feet and it turned right off no error codes I goose no error codes popped up again come on goose oh, hi big boy hi big boy Oh, I know. Hi, Goose. Is that Gabby? I know. Hi, Goose. I know. Give me kisses. Yes, that's right. Okay. Leave me alone. No error codes or anything popped up. I'm like, crap. So, I go back into the cabin. I'm fiddling around, trying to figure it out, searching YouTube. Dogs, you knock that camera over, I'm going to pop you in the head. Uh, no videos on YouTube. The manual's not doing me any good. <clears throat> I can't really find anything online. You know, I found some a couple forums online and on the, the L, one of the LS tractor pages on Facebook talked about codes. I'm like, but I don't got any codes. So I came back out here, started it up. It fired right up. I moved five feet. It shut down again. A code popped up. Woohoo! Because without a code it's hard to go anywhere right I'm not like you old-time guys who just can tear into an engine and know what's going on it flashed on and then flashed off it didn't pull back up I'm like crap what was the code it said F11 something whatever so I tried to start it back up again it wouldn't start up again I had to do it multiple times to get the code back on and then I just left the key on. Went and grabbed my phone, took a picture of the code. This is the code right here. It has a little book symbol with an S next to it. Underneath that it says F11. And in the top right corner of the LCD screen, it shows 157. And now it'll flash back and forth between your hour meter and the code. It'll flash back and forth, at least on this tractor it does. So I, I get back online and I type in F11 code 157 LS tractor, blah, 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 whatever. And I couldn't really find anything. And I, I looked on YouTube, searched LS codes, LS code 157, nothing. You know, there's just really not a whole lot out there about it. You know, even, even I, I, was, I was able to come by a code reader which I'll put a link in the description of the website. I think it's uh, ls.tractor.com. 
tractoraircodes.com. And it'll bring up a web page and it'll have like a little troubleshooting guide. And then below all that, it'll have a bunch of numbers. <coughs> Excuse me, a bunch of numbers, which is your codes. So I figure out how that works. I scroll down to code 157. It talks about a fuel problem. I'm like, crap, okay, fuel problem. It's been cold. Is it possible that we got some gelling of the fuel? Yes, it's possible. Is it possible we got some water in there and it froze a fuel line? Yes, that's possible. So knowing that, that's where I start. I look in the fuel tank. The fuel tank is fine. The fuel tank is liquid. Our anti-gel is working as it should. You know, um, I, mean, I wasn't really too concerned about water getting into the system because we have a water separator on our big fuel tank, on our bulk storage tank. The tractor has a water separator. I'm running the anti-gel stuff. I think we're using the Lucas anti-gel water dispersant. And so I wasn't too concerned about it. So I called the dealer and when I was talking to him, he's like, well, the code's telling me everything is, the problem is you probably got some water in there somewhere. Okay, so if we got water in there, it's probably condensation in the tank and it just kind of froze up on, on one of the, the fuel lines going into the fuel filter. Because it would start, but it wouldn't run for very long. Dogs. <laughs> but it wouldn't run for very long. It would run like 45 seconds. So I come out this morning to get cracking on it. Oh, another thing he said was on the, uh, the primer on the top of the fuel filter, or the water separator fuel filter, the primer which was stuck in the closed position, I had, to, I had to manually pick it up and prime it. And I was telling him that, he's like, you got something frozen somewhere. You know, this is what I would do. And he told me, you know, get a heat gun and start warming stuff up or a heater, start warming stuff up. Well, the position of the tractor, we could have done that. I'd have to dig out a bunch of extension cords. And I told him my, my, my thought, if that's the case, then I'll just go get some uh, power service 911 for winter emergencies, restores flow of fuel to engine caused by gelled fuel and frozen fuel filters. And I'm like, all right, we get that. I'm coming out this morning to work. I tried to start it first thing this morning. It did the same thing. Popped up the code again. All right, cool. So I go in, uh, finish taking care of the animals and sit down for a few minutes, smoke a cigarette, blah, blah, blah. Come back out here, getting ready to start. I get over here get the hood popped up. You know, the prime and the primer, I'm trying to move the primer again and it won't move at all. The primer, the, the primer pump just won't move at all. I, yesterday I had to pick it up and, and push it down, pick it up, push it down. And it's supposed to be an automatic, you know, auto automatic spring back or whatever. And dogs. <laughs> can you see them over there playing? <laughs> I don't know if you can. So I pour some, uh, Diesel 911 in the fuel tank. I pour in probably three or four ounces, whatever. And I'm going into the into the shed shop to grab the stuff that we I think I'm going to need. You know, a zip tie because the there's the there's a sensor on the bottom of the filter where you uh, bleed the water out, and I had to disconnect that, and it was all zip tied. So I grab zip tie, a container to drain the fuel in. You know, that kind of happy stuff. And I come back out. All right, sorry about that. Battery died. Where was I? Um, oh, yeah, so I stayed out here for like 45 seconds, maybe a minute and a half or whatever, 
make sure it's going to run because it's cold this morning. We got crappy weather. We had like some ice, rain, sleet stuff happening. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Anyway, I kicked up the idle to about 12, 1300 so I could hear it from inside the cabin and let it run for probably 30, 45 minutes. And everything's all good. The LS tractors, there's really not a lot of information out there yet. It's, it's, it's a really new tractor. I'm not sure how old they are, but we need to start building the community of problems with the dang tractors that people are having. Sorry this wasn't a homestead video. It's just all tractor talk. A little bit, a little bit about what I went through to, you know, hopefully we can help other tractor owners out, other LS tractor owners out. You know, as far as I can tell, the codes are the same for all LS tractors. And that's, that's all I could tell. So anyway, thank you guys. We appreciate you supporting us and hanging out with us. And uh, Jeremy, over at Living the Dream, I'm sending Murphy back to you. Oh, I'm just kidding, buddy. Anyway, so I think our next video, I don't know if you can see behind me, but up back up there by the shed shop, right over there, we're going to be setting up the sawmill. Tony's got me doing all kinds of crazy stuff this, this summer, and she doesn't even want to start the cabin yet until a couple other things happen. So we need to get the sawmill up before mud season gets here, before spring gets kicked in. So before I start back for work and they're looking at maybe March 1st to start up again with all the snow on the ground, I don't think so. We'll see what happens next week because we got temperatures in the high 30s all next week. And uh, yeah, so sawmill will probably be the next video. I'm wanting to start it on Monday or Tuesday maybe. Uh, I'm going to get cleaned up tomorrow and get the sawmill pulled out. Maybe Sunday I'll start unpacking it. And yeah, that's it. So anyway, you guys have a great Friday afternoon. Have a great weekend and we'll see you later. Bye.